Behold the faithful and prudent steward whom the Lord set over his household. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ. Inexpressible providence, we're pleased to choose Saint Joseph as the spouse of your most holy mother of your son. Grant, we pray, that we who revere him as our protector on earth may be worthy of his heavenly intercession through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me for I continue childless? And the heir of my house is the Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. The Lord brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then the Lord said to him, So shall your descendants be. And Abram believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then the Lord said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur to, of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But Abram said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? The Lord said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Abram brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over the 
against the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. When the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between the, these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, To your descendants I give this land and in the river of Egypt, the river of Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Let a response be, The Lord remembers his covenant forever. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. I give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his presence continually. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. He is mindful of his covenant forever, of the word that he commanded for a thousand generations. The covenant that he made with Abraham, he sworn promise to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothes, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorns or figs from thistles? In the same way, every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will know them by their fruits. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, uh, white again for the Feast of St. Joseph. Uh, Wednesdays are a special day that the church has set aside to honor St. Joseph and I always uh, offer up this Mass for the, the building project that I believe God has called us to. And I was just thinking about how wonderful the first reading really fits into this. Here, here's Abraham's like, okay, God, you're saying you pulled me out of the land of Chaldean and you said I'm going to be this like great father of the nations, um, but I'm like 90 years old now and there is no child. You know, and it's not like my, my wife has a spring chicken either. You know, she's, she says uh, she's in her 80s, okay? So, um, God, how is this going to happen? How is this going to happen? Well, this is one of the beautiful things about God is that this is how things are meant to look often when we're following God. How is this going to happen? I was thinking about our church building projects. Like, why would we try to build a church during this time? 
You know, we've just been hit by COVID. We've been through two years of whatever, you know, hell, really. You know, where finances are, are hit, like, that's a dumb idea. Construction's at an all-time high. You know, why would you attempt something like that? There's great disunity within this parish. Uh, we just got hit by all this uh, stuff about the residential school, whether, you know, falsely or, or true. You know, these attacks that are, that are coming against us. But why? why? Why would you do something like that? Because at the end of the day, you know, and not only that, you know, when you look at the diocesan protocols, I'm not complaining against them. They're hard. They're simply hard. The bishop, the diocese is making a jump through like 20 hoops by the end of the day. And they want 90% of the funds up front before we even start building. It seems like an impossible endeavor. And praise God. Praise God. <laughs> because that means at the end of the day, we won't be able to say, oh, I did this, look at what I did. We'll have to say, thank you, God, that I was part of a miracle. You know, and this is, this is the plan. Like, you look at the church, it starts off in these humble things with a, with a big fisherman who can't, like, take his foot out of his mouth. You know, and this guy is, like, the first pope of the church. We shouldn't be afraid that things are not going well, that we're not friends with the world all of a sudden. It's like, of course we're not friends with the world because we love the world. We love the world and the world will always hate us because as Catholics we say, no, friend, reach up higher. You know, everything about our faith is, is miraculous. It's incomprehensible. It's hard. But that's why we have God. That's why St. Paul says, if God is for against us, if God is for us, who can be against us? You know, and, and we, want, we want things to be challenging in a certain sense because we want to see the, the beautiful, miraculous hand of God. So that at the end of the day, we're not saying, look what I did. Look what I accomplished. I did this. We say, praise God. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that was awesome. And this is the beautiful thing about God is God blew Abraham's expectations. You know, not only did Abraham have a son in his, his late age, he saw God like fire through his smoking pot. He saw miracles happen in his life because he believed in the impossible. That was his, that was his, that was his, his that was his reward. You know, Abraham gets to be the father of nations because he trusted. And you and I will get to see these miraculous, wondrous works, you know, not be false prophets. We will get to bear much fruit because we trusted in God. And so this day, once again, we entrust ourselves, our church, to St. Joseph be a father to us, to, to help us through all the insurmountable obstacles that we constantly run into. Dear brothers and sisters, gathered as one to celebrate the good things we have received from our God, let us ask him to prompt in us prayers that are worthy of his hearing. We pray for our Holy Father Francis, for Pope Emeritus Benedict, for our Bishop Joseph, 
for their health, intentions, and constant growth in faith, hope, and charity. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray for the grace to be satisfied to be friends with you and not friends of the world. We pray that we can love the world radically and point them to your holy plan for each and every one's life. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray, um, we pray for a great unity and love among our brothers and sisters, all the baptized. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray uh, for St. Joseph's intentions and we entrust our church project to him. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray in a special way for Nicole Blair and her family at this time, that God will bring great healing in her life. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray uh, for Mariel as she prepares to enter into the convent, that God may give her the graces and blessings she needs to become the great saint she's called to be. For this we pray to the Lord. In a moment of silence, we offer up our own prayers and petitions. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all the holy souls in purgatory, and we ask them to join us with the saints and angels in heaven, especially St. Joseph, our blessed mother, St. Joseph Capasso, to pray for more vocations to the priesthood, to the consecrated life, and the holy matrimony, to preserve all those in their vocations, and assist us in our universal call to holiness. For this we pray to the Lord. May the petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merit, through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we prepare to offer the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, or O Holy Father, we humbly ask to be sustained in our service by the prayers of St. Joseph, whom you call to watch like a father on earth over your only begotten son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and in honoring St. Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as a spouse to the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household, to watch like a father over your only begotten Son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and for my divine teaching we dare to say, Our Father, in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us Lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God, behold him, he takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be
by Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. Unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Well done, good and faithful servant. Come, share your master's joy. Let us pray. Mm -hmm. 
Restored by these life-giving sacraments, Lord, may we live for you always in, always in justice and holiness, helped by the example and intercession of St. Joseph, who in carrying out your great mysteries serve you as a man just and obedient through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended.